What is up guys? So this is going to be something new and never done before on my channel. I have a guest, which is, well, as I said, something I, <laughs> I'm i doing for the first time. This is Johnny and he has a channel, Johnny Turbo Makes Games. So like, just introduce yourself, man. Yeah, what's going on everybody? I'm Johnny. I have the Turbo Makes Games YouTube channel and I uh, just love to talk about game development. So we're going to be answering some of your questions today. So Super excited for this. Yeah, make sure to check out Johnny's channel. Link will be in the description below for the second part of this Q&A. So like I have here a few questions, actually answers that we want to comment about. And the question is, and this is what I ask my audience a lot. When it comes to developing video games, what's your single biggest challenge? So what is the biggest challenge? And I have a few very interesting responses over here that are the most common ones. And the first one is, overcome difficulties with code trigonometry or how this is pronounced tri trigonometry etc what seems impossible for the time without help like this is something that a lot of people have fear with when it comes to developing video games like you know trigonometry math or whatever what are your takes on that yeah that's that's a really good point i know especially if you aren't like super good with math or you're not really confident with math i guess um, then, you know, a lot of the stuff can seem scary. You know, you see like logarithms and sine and cosine and all these crazy different methods. Um, so it, it can seem a little bit scary, but there are so many good resources online available for you to, you know, just learn kind of some of these basic math concepts. And for me, at least, um, I know I, I did, you know, some pretty higher level math classes back kind of when I was in high school, but sort of after that, I, I kind of dropped out of it a little bit. And then as I got back into um, kind of game development and some needed to start doing some more kind of, you know, hardcore math operations for just kind of some little things here and there, um, you know, I, I found it really nice that there were plenty of resources online available for me to um, just kind of relearn those concepts, um, refresh my mind. Um, but it, it's not something necessarily like critical to game development but it's just kind of all dependent on what you want to do in your games. Um, what do you think about that? Exactly, this is what I wanted to say. Like for the majority of games, you will not even need any complex math. Like the like complex math, diving into like the depth of vectors and matrices and whatnot. From what I saw, you only need that if you wanna you know program your own graphics. Like dive into the graphics part, dissect it, and so on and so forth. But like for basic. For not even for basic games, for platformers, 3D games, you don't need that complex math. You know, any everything that you need can be done within Unity itself. You have like you can calculate the distance, you can calculate the paths, all that can be done within Unity without like with a line of code. So my advice is don't yeah. stress, don't stress about math that much, you know. Exactly. And and that's another thing it, it kind of brings up a good point is you don't necessarily need to know exactly how these functions work under the hood because the computer basically does it for you. If you kind of understand on a high level um, of how to implement these and where you might want to use them, then, you know, you can just use the functions that are given to you by Unity and, you know, experiment that with them and then see, you know, does that give you the result that you want it to do? If it does, great, um, but you don't really need to understand what's going on under the hood most of the time. Exactly, exactly. Good point taken because a lot of people want to, like, I want to understand how this... You don't need to understand that. I just need to know that this will calculate that certain... Because <laughs> yeah, you know, no, that, that's great if you do and you, you do want to take it the extra mile and learn that extra step, but I, I wouldn't say it's a requirement. Yeah, especially if you just want... If you just want the result of the thing that you are calculating. So you're just wasting your time, basically. Okay, moving forward. So for the next one, I'm not sure the best way to code. Wanted to know more efficient ways and techniques on coding different stuff in the future. So basically this is like, you know, which, let's say, not, uh, which patterns should people implement? But again, this depends on mm. the game. So what's your take on yeah. that one? So... The more that I've gotten into programming, the more that I've realized that it's less about actually writing the code and it's really more about problem solving. So you kind of want to see, you know, what is your final result and, you know, what is the actual problem that you're trying to solve? And then from there, you just want to kind of break it down into, you know, smaller little pieces. So maybe you have this big system that you want to try and implement 
you know, how do you break that up into its smaller individual components? Um, and then kind of once you have that, you can break those smaller components down even further until you're at the point where you can just write one single line of code. Then once you have that, then you can just move on to the next and the next, and then, you know, just kind of slowly build it out like that. And then you'll end up having that, you know, whole big system that was so, you know, daunting to you at first. Yeah, awesome. I couldn't said it. In, I couldn't said that better. Like you know, people <laughs> because a lot of people are like you know you need to write clean code. Okay, that's that all that that is true. But especially when it comes to Unity, what people need to understand understand this especially for people who come from other parts of programming, app development, uh, desktop app development. Like you know, sometimes yeah. when I mention static variables or static classes, and people are like, "Dude, static is like what well, Unity." treats static <laughs> differently than what you are used in in software development like in software development static is a big no-no but in unity especially the singleton pattern which is one of the most important one of the most used patterns in unity it's yeah it's, yeah it's very useful yeah, yeah and it it's it's a static variable it's a static variable so don't stress too much about your software knowledge implementing it in unity just follow you know the unity unity's yeah. guidelines for programming that's all there is to it exactly. exactly yeah focus on problem solving first making a good game and then worry about you know cleaning up your code and all that awesome awesome i have one which is a really good one any tips to stay okay. any tips to stay motivated currently i'm doing one of my tutorials and i'm enjoying it and i can understand it but my brain keeps saying i'm never going to be able to do it i know i will be able to do it one day if i keep at it but pushing past the doubts is difficult that's a great question and i actually do have a similar question that i want to read because i think it's pretty funny uh so this person says how to stay motivated and focused as a single game developer that works on first game, especially since we work on a computer that is, you know, connected to the internet. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think we all know that, you know, the internet is a huge distraction, but you know, I think it really comes to discipline um, and that's self-discipline, you know, keeping yourself focused um, and there are, I mean, there are plenty of tricks that you can do, um, you know, like time boxing, you know, say, you know, I'm only going to be working on this one system from this time to this time. Um, you know, once I reach that kind of end time limit that I've set, then, you know, maybe I can move on to something else or, you know, play some games or whatever. Um, but I, I think it really comes down to self-discipline. You need to just kind of set rules for yourself um, that you that you make sure that you follow and then that's how you can kind of just follow through and you know Just just take it a little bit of a time. I know um, You know game development There's a lot of things that you need to do and it can be very overwhelming, but you know, you can only do one thing at a time Exactly, and I, I talk about these things a lot self-discipline and getting yourself into control i talk about these things like for example sleep is one of the things of game development that is when you hear it it's not about game development but it is because if you have a bad sleeping habit so especially true. yeah especially these days with all the social media instagram TikTok, you know people are just you know like if you take a look at like the time 10 years ago 20 years ago people go to bed at 10 p.m 9 p.m 11 p.m tops but now people go to right. bed at 2 a.m 3 a.m 4 a.m they sleep up to noon and uh, what people need to understand they're messing their body up and it's really important to keep your body in shape in terms of not going to the gym that also helps but in terms of sleeping healthy eating healthy and all of this because if your brain is tired no matter the idea of your game, no matter whatever, you are not going to be able to finish it, to work on it, be motivated to continue. If you sleep two hours a day or, or, or I don't know, five hours, but you lay at 3 a.m., wake up at 8 a.m., that, you know, that's the issue right there. Yeah, I mean, if, if you think that if you think that you're just to kind of tag on to that, if you're if you think that you're, you know, sleeping less that you're going to get more done um, because, you know, you have more hours in the waking day, that's not really the case. You know, you're going to be really unproductive for those hours when you're when you're so tired. So, um, you know, getting getting a good sleep schedule is important. And real quickly, I'll just say one of the tricks that I use personally is I have one alarm on my phone for 6 a.m. seven days a week. 
And so that's the time that I wake up every single day, no matter what. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and also what I want to point out, that is from person to person. You need to experiment with yourself in order to find, because for example, I, 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 I yes. hate sleeping. I mean, that sounds crazy, but if I, <laughs> if I can sleep an hour a day, if I can take a pill or whatever to sleep one hour a day, that would be amazing. But I usually sleep Great. Yeah. four to six hours. That's my average, four to six hours, depending on like in these winter times, four or five hours a day, that's enough for me. But you need to experiment and find that and be consistent. Like if your schedule is sleep at, I don't know, 11 p.m., wake up at 4 a.m., do that and be consistent. Of course, it, it's not harmful if you like, you know, during the day you want to sleep 20, for 20 more minutes, 30 more minutes to refresh yourself. That's cool. Do it. But like, yeah, you know, great. Be, yep. be consistent at your schedule, because as you said, if you think like, you know, staying <laughs> awake, even if you're tired to be more productive, you know, it sounds dumb, not, not to mention to go into it, how, you know, how it's going to go out or a workout. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to go into the second part over here, which is like, why do you want to learn game development? This is the second question that I asked and, and one of cool. the, some of the interesting responses over here, and I want to hear your take on special this one. I want to create video games on the side as a hobby. And he continues and perhaps earn a little extra money on the, on the side of my normal job. But this hobby thing, what do you think about that? What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think making games as a hobby is great. Um, you know, I, to be honest, I think I l enjoy game development more than playing games. Of course, I enjoy playing games, but, um, you know, making games is certainly like a, a hobby for me. And, you know, if you really want to get good at it, you have to be consistent with it. You know, just do a little bit every day. Um, and if you do want to take it into a commercial business, then and something you want to start making money off of, then you really need to understand, you know, what you're doing and you need to actually think of what you're doing um, like a business person would, you know, you need to make smart business decisions, um, you know, just make sure you're being making, you know, smart financial decisions and being wise with your time. So um, I, I think that's an important thing that a lot of people need to realize is why they're developing games. Are you developing games, you know, just for fun because you have something cool and you want to, you know, express yourself on the side outside of work? Or are you trying to actually make a business off of this and make some money off of it? Because I think those um, are not necessarily two independent things, but if you really set your goals of what you want to do, then that's going to influence your decisions, um, you know, of, of what you do day to day. Awesome. I have two takes on this one and you tackled partially one of them. And that is, of course, you need to separate these two things. Do you want to do it as a hobby or do you want to do it as a business? And these are, you know, separate things in terms of how you're going to tackle them. But when it comes to hobby, I also have, I, I separate them in two things because I get this a lot on my channel and which made me ta think about it a lot. And I was also guest with inexperienced developer this is his youtube channel and i was on his podcast and he also mentioned one one really interesting thing like even if you want to do game development as a hobby what is your goal is your goal yeah. just yes. to like create game and you don't care about it it's for your own fun you can you know you're gonna create it and forget about it that's one part if you want to create your game and still publish it for people to play you still need to learn some of the things that you would need for the business aspect, like marketing your game. Because if you if you wish for other people to play your game, if you just create it and publish it and you know, cross your fingers for downloads, it's not gonna happen, you know? Those days are over. Yeah. And I don't wanna like yeah. kill somebody's dream because what well, usually when I talk about these things, people in the comments are like, oh, thanks for demotivating people. I'm just, you know, these this is the reality of things. People need to, you know, yeah, no, we are it's, not it's five great to be we're not five year olds. Yeah, we, it's great to be positive and encouraging, but at the same time, like, you know, you need to be you realistic. Need to be realistic. Let, yeah. let people know how it is. You need to have an audience to, you know, sell yeah. your game yeah. to. Yeah, we are not we're not five year olds. It's not like your imagination, you're imagining you can fly and then you you, you really can fly. No. <laughs> I mean, this is the you know, the reality of things. So if you want to do it as a hobby but still want people to download your game, learn a little bit of marketing, you know. Start a YouTube yeah. channel, yeah. post yeah. devlogs, you know, that can be, that can go ahead. Share your game on Reddit, yeah. yeah. And it can go hand to hand with your, with your uh, development and so on and so forth. And it will not, you know, it, it will go, it will go parallel. It will not take too much of your time. It will take maybe an extra hour of work, 
but it will totally pay off in the end if you feel you know rewarded or or if you feel you know whatever you feel some nice feeling when you see people like downloading and playing your game so yeah uh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, that, uh, I think this concludes with the first part of these questions. For the second part, we can go on to your channel. Link will be in the description below for the second part of these Q&A. And thank you, Johnny, for dropping by. I really enjoyed having you here. Definitely great. Yeah, this was a ton of fun. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for the second part of this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Say thank you for watching and this is what I just say thank you for watching whatever I mean just hit the like button subscribe <laughs> and go over check out Johnny's channel subscribe to him as well very nice content puts out on a regular basis which is really important because I I you know this lacks in the game dev community Reg channels that post on a regular basis and check out the second part I will see you guys in the next video later, later everybody thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.